Good afternoon and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker. First, some of the highlights. Today, Nigeria may adopt Madagascar's herbal potion after clinical trial as President Buhari orders for clinical analysis. Edo governor wades into clash of security operatives enforcing COVID-19 guidelines. And five COVID-19 patients die in Russia hospital fire. Several nations have gone into research at the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the therapy that seems to be of interest in Nigeria at the moment is a COVID organic CVO, an organic herbal concoction launched by the president of Madagascar, claiming that it can prevent and cure patients suffering from the novel coronavirus. President Rajolina attributed recovery of 105 COVID-19 patients in Madagascar to the herbal potion. Nigeria's president, Mohamed Buhari, has joined the list of African presidents with interest in the potion. And through the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, he has asked for a clinical analysis of its efficacy by the National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development and the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control. What is the clinical process for medical verification will be joined later on the program by a pharmacist. 4,641 confirmed cases of COVID-19 is the latest figures released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, with 150 deaths and 902 patients discharged. 242 new cases were recorded in 13 states last night, with Lagos having the highest number of cases at 88, followed by Kano, 64. Katsina, of that number, has 49, Kaduna, 13, Ogun 9, Gombe 6, Adamoa 4, the FCT 3, 1 each in Ondo, Oyo, Rivers, Zamfara Bonu, and Bochi states. A breakdown of the cases by region shows the highest figure in the country from the southwest, Lagos, followed by Kano in the northwest with 666 cases. The FCT in the north central is in third place. Bonu follows next in the northeast. We have Edo in the south south while in the southeast, Enugu leads with 10 confirmed cases. President Mohamed Buhari has given approval to the Presidential Task Force and other relevant bodies to commence clinical analysis on the Madagascar herbal potion. The COVID Organics is an organic herbal uh, concoction launched by the President of Madagascar who claims that it can prevent and cure patients suffering from coronavirus. President Rajalina attributed the recovery of a number of patients in the country to the herbal potion. The federal government is also working with the World Health Organization to commence a treatment regimen solidarity trials in six states to include Lagos, the FCT, Ogun, Kaduna, Sokoto, and Kano states. In the meantime, the president's directive was also confirmed yesterday by the chairman of the presidential task force on COVID-19, Mr. Boss Musafa, who mentioned that the COVID organics will be subjected to local scrutiny upon arrival, meaning that it must pass through validation tests. It's been freighted to Guinea-Bissau uh, by the president of uh, Madagascar, president of prime minister, sent it to Guinea-Bissau. And uh, certain allocations have been made to different countries. Uh, we have an indication of the quantity that has been allocated to Nigeria, and we are supposed to make arrangements to freight it out of Guinea-Bissau uh, to Nigeria. Uh, I've received instructions from Mr. President uh, to make arrangements to freight it uh, home with a clear instruction that I should subject it to the validation process, similar to what would happen to any other uh, medicine or syrup or vaccine that is discovered or created internally. So it will be subjected to the same process uh, before uh, uh, it is uh, put into, into any form of use. 
in our attempts to finding solutions to the COVID-19. Joining us on the program is Mrs. Chinelo Okonkwo, Assistant Director of Pharmaceutical Sciences. She's the Secretary, Special Projects Committee, uh, APNAN. She joins us from our Buja studios. Welcome to the program. Looking for solutions to the uh, SARS-CoV-2, how close would you say Nigeria is? Thank you very much for that interesting question. Now, I would like to say that um, some things are going in the pipeline, although we're not very close to the solution to COVID-19. Um, the drugs for the treatment is still in the, under, undergoing trials. And this is a challenge for most countries. There's no global standard drug at present. And um, I, we have the information that some proposals have been sent for validation to check some herbal products to see if they will treat patients and cure them of COVID-19 in Nigeria. So the World Health Organization has talked about over 89 vaccines that are in the process undergoing clinical trial. What is the clinical process for um, medical verification? What processes, you know, does it go through? In terms of medical validation, and processes for the launching of new drugs. We have preclinical trials and we also have clinical trials. Preclinical trials in the sense that the new agents would have been tried on animals through in vivo studies or in vitro studies, whereby the agent is tested on body fluids, body organs, or on organisms. In terms of vaccines, they are the, still on the pipeline because the, there is no valid um, vaccines for now, as well as treatment. And we have clinical trials whereby in the first phase, you try such products on healthy individuals. They have to volunteer to be tested with the new products before it can come into existence. And then we also have phase two trials. In phase one trials that you do with healthy individuals, they shouldn't be more than 100. It's tested in few people. But for the second phase, you test the product on people that have the disease. Like in the case of vaccines, you are trying to prevent the infection, so it has to be tested on the target population. And then before you go into multi-center trials, which is phase three. So during such processes, we try to check the effects, the adverse effects, and what um, the product has to offer, so that when somebody is exposed to such um, organism or infection, the, the body will be protected because the vaccine is supposed to stimulate antibodies from the immune system to protect the person. So their process is not a one-day effect. It takes a, lot, a long time before you can come out with um, a validated product. How different is the solidarity trials, which the World Health Organization has said a few states in Nigeria are willing to commence a treatment regimen? Yeah, the Solidarity Trials is an international clinical trial by the World Health Organization. This, in this trial, the World Health Organization has come out with some protocols reducing the, the steps in which a product is launched. There are um, four products in the pipeline, like we have Remdesivir, we have Hydroxychloroquine or Chloroquine, we have Lopinavir, Ritonavir, we also have Interferon Vita Alpha that is being tried. The, the essence is for all of WHO to come up with a standard treatment for COVID-19. That is why they have come up with that, to reduce the timing, to reduce the, the time it will take for the product to be launched. And we know that it's a problem is, uh, when you are trying to do trials, like in a place in Nigeria, the um, people have to understand what you're trying to do. Like NAVDAC sent out this uh, approved hydroxychloroquine for trials. How many people were able to volunteer to be tested on that um, drug? So that is an issue here. So WHO has done this because the health system is under pressure and this pressure also affects the WHO. That's why they have to do something fast in this emergency situation where we have um, COVID-19 that is already killing people. Even though you've mentioned that we are in an emergency situation, do you expect that there will be some risks with the solidarity trials? No, I don't expect it to be a risk because um, in the drug, drug discovery and development industries, we now use artificial intelligence. Using artificial intelligence and machine learning enables a product to be produced very quickly, reliable and with precision something that a machine can simulate and tell you products that will do very well 
like in all, most of these drugs that WHO is trying, um, apart from remdesivir that um, is new to trying it on viral infection, okay, it's, um, that is very new, that hasn't been given patency. Some of them are drug repurposing. They already have clinical evidence for use in certain ailments, like we know of hydroxychloroquine, has found clinical evidence and efficacy in the treatment of malaria. But in this case, the dose differs. So it's not, if, even though I mentioned emergency situation, is drug repurposing, that makes it shorter because there are a lot of uh, toxicity studies has been done to show that using these drugs with long term, you can be sure people will not be exposed to getting some toxicities like causing cancer, modifying their gen um, genetic makeup, or causing um, teratogenic effects, affecting pregnant women, or affecting the major organs in the body. So we have to, those drugs are already in, in use with, for other evidences, but WHO wants to try them because they have found cure or relief for most patients that they use some of these drugs to treat in China and some other countries. I must as quickly of, ask now, you... Like, um, as at 20... Okay. Just to quickly ask you your opinion of the COVID organics, that's the Madagascar herbal solution to COVID-19. The, the, my opinion for COVID organic that Madagascar has presented the, to the world now is that there is um, nothing wrong in trying a herbal product so long as it has proven efficacy. Like as we see um, the um, Madagascar drug that has been presented is an eye-opener that a lot of things have gone into phytomedicine. They have support. That is why they're able to come up with um, this um, remedy. There is nothing wrong with it. And I like what the approach the federal government is using in sending these products into validation tests. In other ways, we have to check that all those toxicity things I mentioned is, um, are not there and that the product is stable and safe. After a long while, we have to look at the, saf the safety studies and the efficacies to be sure that the claims they have is also correct. And then for us in Nigeria, coming back to our own phytomedicine, we have to, while we think local, we have to also think global. For instance, the drug that Madagascar has uh, presented, if these drugs come out to be valid and, then, and the claims are right, then it should be a drug that can be used globally. If I use it in Nigeria, then somebody in the US or other countries should be able to use it. And that's what we are looking at, to see that um, this product is safe and that the claims that they have presented is also correct. All right, we appreciate your time to finding uh, these solutions. We hope indeed that the world can uh, get those solutions quickly. Thank you, Mrs. Chinyelo Okonkwo, Assistant Director of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Thank you Many much. thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. The news just in says 15 people have been killed at Gonan Rogo village, that's in Kajuro, local government area of Kaduna State. Uh, five other people were also injured in the attack. Uh, we heard this attack occurred about 11 p.m. last night. We have uh, a lot of uh, information uh, coming up from that, and we'll uh, tell you more as soon as we know, especially the reasons why this attack is coming at this time. Again, 15 people have been killed at Gonan Rogo village in Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State. We also hear five other people have been injured in that attack. We'll bring you more as we know them. And as frantic efforts are being made to curb the spread of COVID-19 and also manage the confirmed cases in Edo State, the government is encouraging residents to come for voluntary screening in the capital. Some residents are already turning up at various centres for the screening, while others are of the view that hunger is their biggest challenge at the moment. In the meantime, the governor has appealed to security agencies to eschew bitterness, work together to ensure the successful implementation of the enforcement of the COVID-19 guidelines. This is coming on the heels of the clash by security operatives in the state. You are aware of the rather unfortunate situation which occurred over the weekend involving some um, security personnel uh, who were on enforcement duties to combat uh, COVID-19. Uh, we've discussed the issues very thoroughly, and um, it's, from what we have heard and seen, it's uh, really rather unfortunate because there's no 
there are no fundamental issues as it relates to the cooperation of the security services in the state. Um, all the services are aligned and committed to the fight of uh, COVID-19. Um, what transpired over the weekend was rather unfortunate. Um, one or two individuals uh, who had misunderstandings that uh, degenerated into um, a bit of uh, conflict. But that has been resolved. The investigation of the matter has been um, seriously investigated. Um, and um, we believe that with the speed and commitment of the various services to get to the bottom of the matter, it will we'll find the culprits and they will be dealt with adequately. We have more on our COVID-19 update when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. Let's show you what some of the states across Nigeria are doing this era of the pandemic. We begin in Akwaibom State, where the government has announced the immediate shutting down of all livestock markets in the state for the rest of the month of May 2020. The secretary to the government and chairman, COVID-19 Management Committee, Dr. Emmanuel Quem, says no new consignment of livestock, goats, cows, rams will be allowed into the state. He's advised sellers to sell off their stock and proceed to shut down. The statement warns that defaulters will be prosecuted as security agencies have been directed to monitor and ensure full compliance. Over in Kano State, the government has announced the extension of the lockdown imposed by one week to help further combat the spread of COVID-19. The State Commissioner for Information, Madam Mohamed Garba, who made the announcement, said the decision was reached after due consultations with the federal government and key stakeholders in the health sector. He said the measure is aimed at further reducing and discriminate person-to-person -person contact, which is considered as one of the major ways the disease is being spread. Over in Bornu State, the government says it has decided to relax the statewide lockdown on Wednesday at midnight. Governor Babagana Zulum stated this during a meeting with representatives of the Christian and Muslim communities. The governor discussed his administration's pandemic response with both groups and sought collaborative measures to guarantee support of worship centers and also sensitization of citizens on preventive measures. The state government also read the Riot Act to operators of private laboratories, pharmacies, patent stores against diagnosing and against treating coronavirus. And the Federal Capital Territory Administration is asking residents of the nation's capital to take the fight against COVID-19 as a personal one for survival. Speaking at the commissioning of the 506-bed Idu Isolation and Treatment Center, the FCT Minister, Mala Mohamed Musa, explained that the administration is working to stop the escalation of coronavirus in the territory. He says they would ensure all protocols established with regards to health and security matters are strictly adhered to. And finally, AQTC government has put a, in place a 100-bed isolation centre, which is almost ready for use as part of preparations to manage COVID-19. The state governor, Dr. Kaede Faimi, inspected the facility, which is within one being currently used as an isolation centre in the capital, Aduikichi. The commissioner for health in the state says the expanded isolation centre is a proactive move ahead of the unforeseen. And now we take a look at the myths and facts of COVID-19. Joining us in the studio is Dr. Lakunle Iroja. He's a respiratory physician. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. We also have Dr. Estienne Ukurabi, a GP registrar, Royal Hospital England, a frontline staff in accident and emergency. He joins us uh, via Skype. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, perhaps let's begin with you, Dr. Ukurabi. And this is looking at um, what the Mirror is reporting, that over 40,000 deaths from coronavirus. Uh, would you say that are things getting better? I mean, after passing the peak or are they getting worse? Um, at, the point, at this point, we have about 32,000 deaths in the United Kingdom. 
And generally, I would say that things look brighter, things are getting better. So we've seen um, day by day the number of uh, deaths due to coronavirus reduce. So yesterday we had one of the lowest accounts, our numbers of deaths in the United Kingdom in um, a lot of weeks. So we had 210 persons die yesterday, which is one of the lowest figures that we have seen in a very long time, as well as the number of new infections. So we can see that, yes, things are getting better in the United Kingdom experience as a frontline worker we understand that psychological impact of the virus is rising especially among health workers yeah that's that's completely true so um we have seen um an increase in uh, the psychological impact of uh, COVID-19 amongst health workers and even non-health workers. So uh, we have moved from uh, the usual uh, cases that we see normally in the front line to see more of mental health cases. So people come in with um, alcohol intoxication, people come in with depression, people come in with uh, suicide attempts and things like that. And we have also seen, you know, this rising even, you know, among the healthcare workers because, um, I mean, coronavirus affects everyone, but, you know, most importantly, you know, the healthcare workers who look after these patients and put their lives at risk. So, yes, we have seen um, quite a lot of uh, psychological impact. Let's come to Dr. Roger here in Lagos, um, respiratory physician. How do you think we've been handling um, our COVID-19 response since, since the coronavirus attacks the respiratory system? Well, the problem with this novel coronavirus is that any, everywhere in the world, everybody's still kind of feeling their way around it. There's nobody that has a perfect response, um, more especially here in Nigeria. We have um, our government trying to do their best, but there's a lot to be desired, um, both in terms of case finding and um, treatment. Treatment, like I said, nowhere, nowhere in the world has any effective treatment been discovered. So everybody's just trying one thing or the other. Case finding is a bit difficult because, as you're aware, we don't produce our own testing kits, so there's a limit to the amount of testing kits that are available. Um, with regards to uh, the modalities they put in place, try and control disease, they've done their best, but it seems to me that while the government is working on the one hand, people in general aren't really working with the government. I don't think that everybody's really being carried along. People believe government is doing their own thing, I'm going to do my own thing. So it kind of leaves a lot to be desired. People aren't really following the instructions. Nobody really wants to sacrifice their own personal comforts or personal desires for um, a response that may or may not affect them. What is the truth, especially uh, the science, that um, the practice of physical distancing prevents us from catching the virus? Well, it's yeah, the fact is, if you don't come in contact with anybody, you're not going to get coronavirus. It's not, it's not going to spread. If you're sitting in your house, it's very unlikely that the virus is going to enter your house and affect you. So the truth is that if people, for a significant period of time, let's say six weeks, if everybody could, it's impossible, I put that caveat there, but if everybody could sit down at home for six weeks, the virus is unlikely to continue to propagate. It's the kind of thing that happened in New Zealand. They've eliminated, they've actually eliminated coronavirus because they put very strict um, lockdown measures and everybody was able to sit down at home and keep a significant distance and by that they were able to eliminate person to person spread. So New Zealand is free of coronavirus. So it, it is possible, but it is not um, very, it's not, it's not likely in many places, especially in Nigeria. Final 30 seconds to you, uh, Dr. Okorebi, and that is your assessment of uh, our report so far here in Nigeria. Well, um, currently in Nigeria, I think the death rate still stands at about 3%, and um, with about nearly 5,000 people infected. I would say that uh, the government is trying, but a lot more needs to be done in terms of, um, you know, preparing the health system to handle the pandemic, which has always been my message to the government. Uh, if the numbers increase to 100,000 cases, are we still going to have, you know, 3% mortality or even more mortalities in Nigeria? How is the um, health system prepared 
to handle the challenge in Nigeria. Okay. Let's I would say get that... Dr. Erodas' last 30 seconds on this as well, <laughs> especially with regards to helping our respiratory system, immune system against the virus. Oof, now, there are many things that everybody's saying that can help and this and that. Um, it's difficult to, to actually recommend anything because nothing has been proven to work. So the kind of things that would be comfortable recommending are, you know, generally take care of yourself, eat vitamin, um, eat fruits and take care and take good care of yourself. You can't really recommend anything specific. There's not really much we can say that will actually help the respiratory system to prevent coronavirus. But people that are at risk, they're the ones that should take the most serious um, social distancing measures, obese, hypertensive, diabetic, especially, and those with other chronic conditions. All right, we appreciate your time. Dr. Lakanle Roja, uh, consultant, pulmonologist, respiratory physician, thank you for joining us. My also, pleasure. Dr. Esther Nukura, BGP registrar in the UK, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Take responsibility in protecting your health. It's the same message from the NCDC and it has shared measures put in place as part of the lockdown ease. The website has live updates on that. Also, the World Health Organization uh, has rolling updates on the pandemic. That's our program this afternoon. We're back again at six. Join us then. I'm Millicent Walker. Bye for now.